Um, I, I have had such a good time in the last half hour. Thank you all so much for being here. And yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, we're, yeah, we're both looking forward to, to hearing your poetry. Um, so I'm going to end on uh, a poem that I wrote recently as an elegy for a, a, a very dear friend of mine uh, who uh, was, a, was a true mystic. His name was Peter Roche de Copens, and I met him 20 some years ago when I was living uh, in, in Pennsylvania, and he had been living in the, in the Pocono Mountains. And uh, we got on really well, and I went to visit him often. And we would talk about spiritual things. And he would, he would have such confidence in our talks that I would often write things down in, in, a, in, a, in a huff. Um, so that I would hold on to them. But then I would look at what he said later, and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. And I think that this happens often in, in some of those, um, uh, that when the highest mind speaks, we feel it and we experience it. We have that experience, but it's not the language that's holding it. It's something else that carries it. Um, and we want desperately to be able to return to it and have that experience again. But it's something that's had in the, in the, in the conversation, in the, in the connection, as much as it is in the words. And so for somebody who works in words, it, it, it's, it's disappointing <laughs> that, you know, even when you have a great poem, it's, it's not the same as having that kind of experience that's carried by this, this energy. Nevertheless, um, I, I remember Peter so fondly, and um, this is called My Talks with the Mystic Roche de Copens. Always it was snowing on the dead land of the Lenape in Pennsylvania, on Prospect Street near Mount Pocono, when he stood waving to me at the door. Then at the kitchen table he'd announce, I'm optimistic, which would shatter me as a great truth, <laughs> though later I'd forget or couldn't understand my scribbled notes. When he was dead, I knew to look for him in Rome, a city he loved for its symbols, where I wrote my convoluted questions, such as, is this ruin good for something? <laughs> and in my head, he'd always answer quickly, saying profound things like, yes. 